commuter rail, traveling up to 150 kilometers an hour. These mighty trains are responsible for transporting just over 300,000 people in Canadian metropolitan areas every day. Trains are fuel efficient, reach high speeds, and can carry thousands of people on a single trip. All the potential is there, and that's why, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, I like trains. Building a commuter rail line in the Halifax Regional Municipality is no real news. Municipal staff have been writing report after report about the implementation of new rail transit in the HRM, and the results of these reports have been the same time and time again. It's feasible, but not economically viable. Currently in HRM, the Integrated Mobility Plan highlights two potential routes for commuter rail. The Regional Council has even assigned a budget for this fiscal year to work on the implementation of a commuter rail project by Halifax Transit. Whatever that means. But at least something is finally going on. The real question is, what are they trying to achieve with commuter rail? What exactly is commuter rail? Will it work here? And most importantly, how will it benefit me? Well, it turns out that everyone benefits from commuter rail in different ways and for different reasons. If you're a transit user or don't drive a vehicle, you can benefit from a faster ride than conventional transit. If you want to switch from driving to riding, then it will save you money because transit fares typically cost less than vehicle maintenance. You can also nap while you're commuting, so that's a perk. If you still want to drive a car, you can still benefit from lighter traffic thanks to every car commuter rail takes off the road at rush hour. The best part about commuter rail is that it follows a dedicated right away. This is especially important to provide fast, frequent, and reliable transit service. I wonder where I heard that from. A commuter rail typically connects a low-density suburban community to a much denser city centre. Commuter rails also typically use existing railways, operate during rush hour in a peak direction, and have service less frequently. Cities utilize these methods to reduce the initial and operating costs. Since the HRM isn't as dense as other Canadian cities that have light rail, mono rail, heavy rail like subways, commuter rail, the cheaper method, makes more sense as a transit option for the municipality. But is that a fair assumption? Let's see what other cities are doing. Other cities in Canada are stepping up their rail game by building more lines of commuter rail. Currently, commuter rails are available in Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, and both Montreal and Toronto are looking into upgrading their services from commuter rails, which is rush hour oriented, to regional express rail, which has all day frequent service. Now back to the East Coast, and also back to reality, because we've only touched on the positives of rail. Commuter rail costs a lot to implement and operate, and the HRM's population is not as large as other Canadian municipalities. Metrolinx will spend $13.5 billion in Toronto, and CDBQ Infra will spend $6.3 billion in Montreal solely on the implementation of their regional express rail. HRM couldn't even collect a billion dollars in property tax last year. There's no denying it, rail systems cost a lot. The Halifax Commuter Rail Feasibility Study projects a minimum of at least $36 million of initial capital costs. This is on top of at least $9 million of annual operational costs. But to put that into perspective, the annual operating costs and capital budget of Halifax Transit is $132 million. Not to mention that they requested an additional $48 million for the 2020 to 2022 budget for its commuter rail project, which may just be enough to build a basic rail system from Halifax to Windsor Junction. We are in no way saying that $36 million is not a lot of money, but what we are saying is it's technically possible to spend that much on a single project. In fact, there are cases of transportation projects in the HRM that will cost similar to the implementation of commuter rail. You know that annoying interchange on Highway 102 where you're trying to exit onto Joseph Howe Drive but you can't because someone is merging right before you? Well, the province of Nova Scotia is spending $20 million to reline the Highway 102 and 103 interchange. In Upper Ten Talon, the province will also spend $140 million to twin Highway 103. And that's great, but you know what you could also do with $140 million? Build a commuter rail and operate it for the next 11 and a half years. Again, we're not suggesting that these highway projects are unnecessary, but it shows that we're willing to spend this much money on highways, just not on commuter rail. We would argue that it's not really about money, and it's more about political will. So what will it be? Highways or commuter rail? That's for you to decide, but personally... Wait! I like trains. No! ...for the 2020, 2022 fiscal year, and that may just be enough money to go to commuter rail from Halifax to Windsor Junction. Fiscal year. Fiscal year. Fiscal. 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 It's not fistical and it's not <laughs> I butchered that last section. It's I've been out here for 48 hours. I know. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Check it. All right. You cannot be perfect.